three facts about Christianity you maybe didn't know. Are you ready? My name is Ryan. Let's dive into it. Number one, Jesus didn't have long hair. When you think of Jesus, you probably think of him having long hair. But this actually wouldn't have been the case. He would have been a Middle Eastern man with short hair. Why? The Apostle Paul describes in 1 Corinthians 11, Does not nature itself teach you that if a man wears long hair, it is a disgrace for him? But if a woman has long hair, it is her glory, for her hair is given to her for a covering. Jesus wouldn't have done what is disgraceful for a man to do, and that is have long hair. So from this, it would show you had short hair, and that's also how Jewish men from the time wore their hair, short. Now in terms of what exactly Jesus looked like, like his facial structure, we don't have any pictures of Jesus, or Mary, or any of the apostles from the first century. Those pictures you might have seen, that's not really those people. That's just a later artist's impression of what that person thought Jesus looked like, but it's not based on facts or the Bible. The only indication of Jesus' appearance is found in Isaiah 53, where it says, He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, and no beauty that we should desire him. So Jesus would have looked just like an ordinary Middle Eastern man. How amazing that the God of the universe would come down in the form of a human and just an ordinary looking one. Number two, hell is not run by Satan. A lot of people think hell as a place run by the devil and the demons and they're going to punish you there. That's not the case. God actually punishes the people there. Just like in society, when a criminal goes to jail, he's not sent there to run the place. No, the jails are run by the government and the government punishes the criminals there. And so God will be the one unleashing his justice on those who end up in hell for their sins. It's why the Bible says in Hebrews 10, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. It also means that hell is not the complete absence of God. It's actually the very presence of his punishment being unleashed. And it's a good thing that God isn't letting the wicked get away with their sins. But since we too have all sinned and deserve that punishment, it should drive us to trust that Jesus took that punishment so we don't have to end up there. Number three, repent doesn't mean ask for forgiveness. A lot of Christians use the word repent, and the Bible uses the word repent some 65 times, but it's not what most people think it means. In the New Testament, it's the Greek word metanoia, which means to change your mind. It actually has no praying aspect to it at all, nor does it mean to stop sinning and be a better person. Where the confusion has come in is that asking for forgiveness and avoiding sin is a result of repentance, the fruit of it. Because if you've come to change your mind, praying to God and avoiding sin will naturally occur. But it is essential to distinguish repentance from the fruit of repentance. Because if you think repentance is needed for salvation, which it is, but you define repentance as asking for forgiveness or living a better life, then that's not salvation by grace anymore. That is salvation by actions or by performance. I spoke to someone today who thought his future sins would only be forgiven once he had asked for forgiveness for them. So if he sinned again tomorrow, he thought he would go to hell because he lost his salvation by sinning until he makes a prayer to God to get forgiveness again. That's performance-based salvation. If I give you a gift, but set a condition that you lose that gift, if you ever do anything bad against me in the future, and you have to ask me for forgiveness to get that gift back, that's not a gift. That's a performance-based contract, and that's not what salvation is like. Heaven is a free gift, so you don't lose salvation when you sin if you're still trusting in Jesus to pay for your sins, because he paid for 100% of your past and future sins. In fact, every sin we've ever done is a future sin from the time Jesus died, because he died 2,000 years ago. So if he can pay for any of our sins, he can pay for all of them if we're trusting in him. So yes, we still say sorry to God when we sin, But that wasn't required to get saved or stay saved, because we know that nothing can separate us from the love of Christ, nor the present, nor the future. That means even future sins, or anything else in all creation, that includes yourself, your part of creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So, repent doesn't mean ask for forgiveness or stopping sin. It's a change of mind about a few things. A change of mind about Jesus. He's now your Savior and Lord. A change of mind about sin, you now realize sin is really bad and offends God, and a change of mind about yourself. 
in essence you come to realize that you are really bad you've done a whole lot of sins you realize you deserve hell and you can't save yourself and so you trust in jesus to save you that he took the punishment you deserve that's repentance and it makes you love jesus and it leads to a change of actions let me know in the comments if you like this video god bless you guys